Abandonment Issues for Sarah W. McNair, 1914-2000 to That you'd leave me was my oldest fear, with none to mind my urgent needs. Abandonment's grip would rend and tear the tissues of my attachment. I'd panic when you were out of place. Naught but your return consoled me. I'd cling to your skirts, bury my face in the fabrics of your presence. Security sedates. I felt safe when I could see you, felt you near. I welcomed your nervous nurture's chafe, your thereness in my figure ground. Eventually I learned to trust, could leave you long enough to play outside, go to school or ride the bus, assured of your anxious waiting. But how could I know, sweet mama dear? My young chest pains were mostly yours. The songs of your loss, your primal fear of sympathetic vibration. Nor did I know you'd birthed a son and lost him to the reaper's blade that clove your heart and left a wound no subsequent child could ever heal. I was told you raged against your God, yet mumbled not an anguished sound, but withdrew instead behind a ward of recurring catalepsy. Just a child was I, and could not know your lingering grief was not some failure on my part, some maiming blow delivered by my trembling hand. When I was but nine, I saw you leave. Your eyes were vacant. You were gone, no more than a wraith, someone to grieve. I'd watch you haunt our joyless home. In the gloom of night, you'd leave your bed to drift about from room to room, looking, listening. You'd cock your head, searching for your lost attachments. So soon they came to take you away and lock you fast behind those walls. An asylum's taint and disarray did mark you so indelibly. And thus my heart knew a wound so fell, a trauma to hold all others, each hurt and loss that my stars foretell gestate in this festering hole. Often gone, you could not protect me from daddy's grand expectations, from feeling less than or incomplete, from my real or imagined fear. Where were you when Reuben pissed on me, when that white girl called me nigger, when weird grown-ups looked at me funny, when I peed in my pants in second grade because I was too afraid of my teacher to ask to go to the bathroom. I wanted to die, or run away, or disappear. Where were you, Mama, when I needed to fight, kick ass, defend myself? Soon, I stopped wondering, conceded your absences and remoteness. Left to my own devices, I learned deception, ruse, ledger domain, the base coin of lying dearly earned to create for myself a mask, a mask to hide the face of my pain, a totem to spook snap judgments, and to spoof so much more than I deign believe I could ever become. That mask took on a life of its own, made as it was from living stuff, its purpose to disguise, to disown hurt, fear, and still tender feelings. And so I began my self-sabotage, Mama. But you are not to blame. Though an easy target for my rage, I am the one responsible. To blame you for failed relationships is disingenuous at best. Control, abuse, and my lying lips drove most of my women away. Nor are you to blame for the choices, the acts of self-betrayal that caused me to cower before the voices in my head that dread committee, I chose to live in my head detached, disconnected, vibrating above my feelings, and I dispatched any emotion that forestalled my self-destructive ambition. My hubris was without limit, a measure in inverse proportion to my lean and hungry self-sense. In this time of reckoning, Mama, I will not blame you. No villainous are you in my sordid drama. Just a woman living the blues. You never put a drink in my hand, and yet I became a hopeless drunk. 
drunk on whiskey, adrenaline, and my whimsical cup of sorrow. On my own, I became addicted to drugs, infatuation, and theatrics. Wretched and conflicted, my mask slipped. My world surely broke. All that I had ever thought, said, or done made my undoing uncertain. The circle that began with desire did not end in satiation, did not close. I watched my life spill out, powerless to occlude the flow, yet in my darkest hour turn about and a moment of clarity. Balance, Mama, grows out of excess. I came back from the edge of death to live, face my fears, embrace success, put conscience in perspective. In the instance of my greatest loss, in despair's desolate spaces, I redeemed my anguish, paid the cost to refresh myself, be born anew. Wrapped in spirit's ecstatic whispers, I felt the toxins drain away, felt my anger, guilt, and shame disperse in day-long hours and minutes. I heard the voice of spirit say, the past is ever wisdom's foe. Look not you backwards, find your way to peace in the eternal now. In the now, in the now, my truth and glory ever, my face soul did glimpse incontrovertible proof of grace, synchronicity, eternality, evidence of a silent witness in the heart, unblemished by the malignant love of intense emotional pain, did glimpse in the heart a place of peace where even an old god's vengeance, wrath, and jealousy can never reach, nor the troubling of the wicked. In the moment, in the now, the path to that heart place is clear. Access is easy. I cannot help but laugh at the irony, drollery. The place to peace is through my heart wound, through that pain which needs be embraced, then let go. Through once lost but now found self-forgiveness that heals truly, completely, that transfigures wholly. Through the veil of ego into the mystery, into the holy presence of the knower within. That glimpse, Mama, was what I needed to take my life back, be it cause rather than effect. I conceded then my responsibility to live life on its terms, to eschew the outside fix for the inside job. There have since been many new looks and more expanded moments. How I wish, Mama, I could have told you all of this while you yet lived. But you left us just when we made bold to believe your frame in Martin. Not that I didn't try to absolve you, forgive you, or make amends. I thought that we had much to resolve, but you resisted all attempts. Life, dementia made these issues moot, till death came sweeping in your room, sent you through the gate of life in root to a better understanding by and by. So rest in blissful peace, Mama. I know we have nothing to resolve. Resting all my needs in you was the act of a child, looking outside myself for nurture, validation, reassurance was child's play. My pursuit of happiness and power ignited my guilt, forced me to abandon love. When I was a child, like the apostle, I spoke, thought, and reasoned childishly. And long after my childhood's end, that child always needs a protector. In truth, I'm a child no longer. A point of light, I am. A vector. I have put away my childish thing.